<laughs> okay, P3. We're going to start P3 today. We're going to start with polynomials and factoring. We're doing like half of P3 today. The first portion of P3 is looking at polynomials, rewriting it in standard form, telling me the degree and the leading coefficient. So you're classifying stuff. That's, you're classifying stuff. So right here I have the polynomial of 4x squared minus 5x to the 7th minus 2 plus 3x. How do I write that? What kind of? Ooh, you can factor out x. No, 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 we're not factoring. I'm not factoring at all right now. That's tough. All I want to do is, all I want to do is write it in standard form. How do I write it in standard form? Yes. 5x. Uh, is it an x I was going, I, you know, go ahead. Go ahead, Tyler. No, you, you just go. No, no, no. Ladies. Someone just go. Negative 5x to the 7th. Yes, I'm and then 4x to the 2nd minus. Yeah, yeah. Two. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is know that 2, 1, 3 or 2 plus? Minus 2 plus 3x. Okay, so 3x minus 2. Good. So what you're doing is you're putting in order from powers. Order. Greatest power comes first, right. down to no powers. The degree. I know the degree. The degree. Seven. Yes. What is the degree? The seven. Seventh degree. Seven. Seven's my degree because it's the largest power. Yeah, Tyler. What is my leading coefficient? Four. No. Five. Negative five. five. Negative five. Negative five. Yeah, Tyler. It's what's in front of the largest power. Okay? It's what's in front of the largest power. So on your homework, when you have this, those are the three things you're going to be doing. Putting it in standard form, writing the degree, writing the leading coefficient. Down here, 4 minus 9x squared, well, how does that go into standard form? Negative 9x squared minus 4. Plus 4. Plus 4. Oh. What is my degree? Negative 9. Square. 2. 2. Oh. What yeah, is my seven. leading coefficient? Nine. Beautiful. That's right. Nine. What about 8? Eight? 8. 8, 8, 8. Eight eight zero eight. <laughs> <laughs> right, isn't it to the so what's your standard form? It's just eight. 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 What degree does it have? One. Uh, one. No. Zero. 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 Yeah. Because there I is no five. x. There's no x. Uh, it's zero. So do I have a leading coefficient then? Nine. Yes. Eight. 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 Four. It's an imaginary variable. Four. 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 Okay. Eight. There's an imaginary variable next to it. There's not an imaginary variable next to it. That's how I remember. Just believe it. Okay, Tether. Whatever. Okay, perform the operation. We're going to just perform some simple math here. If I want to perform this operation, what do I need to do? Combine like terms. Combine like terms. So let's start with 5 cubed plus x cubed. You get 6x cubed. Then we're going to go to negative 7x squared and positive 2x squared. 5x squared. Negative 5x squared. Yep, negative 5x squared. Then there's no x here, but there is here, so minus x. And then I have negative 3 plus 8. Yeah, I like to, I just put shapes around them so that I know what goes with what. Sorry. Okay. So I have 6x cubed minus 5x squared minus x plus 5. Now, down here, I have this um, section minus this section. What do we have to do with this minus? Yeah, it's going to go to each portion of this. So if I start with 7x to the 4th, I technically have minus 3x to the 4th, which gives me? 4x. Good. Then I have... Negative x squared, and I have minus negative 4x squared. So it gives me a plus 3x squared. Then I have negative 4x, and I have minus 3x. No, not multiplying. Yeah, negative 7x, 4 and 3, 7. And then I'm just left with two. Okay. Can you handle uh, performing those operations? I of course. Yes, you can. I have faith in you. I have faith in you. Then we're going to get over to multiplying. Multiplying the top one's easy. What are we going to do? Foil. Foil. So 3x squared times 5x. 3x squared. 3x times 7. 21x. 21x, <laughs> negative 2 times 5x, negative 10x, and negative 2 times 7. 
seven. Negative 14. And then we just have to combine like terms. So you get 15x squared um, plus 11x minus 14x. And they just want us to leave it like that for now. Okay. What happens if I'm multiplying two trinomials together? Well, the extra long. Yeah, because you're gonna you're gonna foil to each piece, right? Yep. Okay. So let's do this. Four x squared times negative x squared. Negative four x. Now negative four x to the fourth. 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 Four x squared times three x. Plus twelve x. Twelve x to the third. Good. And 4x squared times 5. 20x squared. Beautiful. Now, x times negative x squared. Negative x to the fourth third. Yep, negative x cubed. x times 3x. 4x squared. No, 3x squared. 3x squared. And x times 5. Then we come over here, negative 2 times negative x squared. 2x squared. Negative 2 times 3x. Negative 6x. This is so long. And negative 2 times positive 5. Negative 10. Oh, bro, I hate that. Negative 10. Now, combine like terms because we can't leave it that way. We only have one 4, right? I like to cross them out so that I can remember what I'm doing. I have 1, 2, 2, 3. So 12x cubed and negative x cubed. Okay, and then I come over here to x squared, x squared, x squared. 20x squared plus 3x squared minus 2x squared. 21x squared. <laughs> and then I come over to 5x and negative 6x. Oh, that's an x. Yeah, yeah, that's an x. Just negative x. And then I have negative 10. Okay, what, please? Oh, you mean right here when I wrote it? My bad. You are correct. I said to the fourth and I read squared, sorry. Any questions on multiplying trinomials or binomials? No. No. It's just going to take time. You just have to do it. Okay? Now, last year we talked about rules, special types of factoring. And if you know those special type of factoring rules, it makes factoring much easier because I can just cheat and write down the answer. Wrong. I don't actually have to foil the whole thing. If I have this, what is this? Sum and difference. Okay? What does that come out to be if I have u plus v times u minus v? It's a rule we talked about last year. U squared. Yep. Uh, minus v squared. Okay, look. If I do this, I get u squared, right? Yeah. And if I do this and I do that, they cancel, right? So you multiply these two together, and then you multiply. Yeah. I just said that. Tyler, I know, I know you said it. Forgive me, Tyler. You did a great job. I was just explaining it to everybody else. It's not, it's not our fault that Alex is slow. Oh, my God. It's goodness. not Alex. It's not Alex. I'm sure everyone in this room needed a lot of explanation. So, sum and difference. When you see the sum and difference, you can just cheat and do it that way. Also, if you see something that has a perfect square minus a perfect square, I can uncoil it pretty simple without doing work. Okay? What about the square of a binomial? What if I have u plus v squared? There's a pattern to that one. Square of a binomial, u plus v squared. Okay. If I have u plus v squared, that means I technically have this. U plus v times u plus v. So yes, you are correct. It starts with u squared. Right? Boom, boom. What does it end with? V squared. And how many are in between there? If I do u times v and u times v, what do I get? No, no, no. U times v, I get uv, right? And then I do it again, so I get uv plus uv, which gives me, no, not squared, 2 uv. So anytime you see a square of a binomial, it's the first thing squared, the last thing squared, and then two times those two multiplied together. Okay? Two times those two multiplied together. So what do you think it's going to look like when it's u minus v? 
right? U minus B times U minus B. The first part is going to be what? The same. The same. U squared. The last part is going to be what? The same. The same plus B squared. In the middle, instead of having a plus, I have a? Subtraction. Minus, and what's going to go there? 2UV. Beautiful. 2UV. Memorize these patterns. Because here's the deal. When I give you a test, I'm going to give you a test as if you have memorized those patterns. Meaning you won't get as much time to work on stuff if you haven't memorized those patterns. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Okay. If you don't have them memorized, you probably won't finish the test in time. If you have them memorized, you should finish the test in flying colors. Wait, which one? All of these, all for everything in green right now. Yeah, when I'm done. Okay, what happens about the cube of a binomial? We did this last year too. U plus V cubed. U plus V cubed. Yeah, we have three of them like this, right? It would be written out like this. Okay. So I take the each one. sort of. We're gonna come up with a trick. I'm gonna. What do you think my first slot is gonna be? If u plus b squared, the first slot is u squared. What's the first u slot? Cubed. U cubed. U cubed. Good. And if the last slot, if the last slot is v squared here, what's the last slot over here? V cubed. V cubed. Okay. And I'm going to have two things in between. And they're both going to be positive because this is a positive. Okay? Now, right here, this was 2UV, right? What power are we working with? So what number do you think is going to be in front of the U and V this time? A 3. Okay? A 3. Here's the deal. The pattern is this. You go 3U squared V. 3UV squared. This power counts down. 3, 2, 1, none. I remember that. This power counts up. 0, 1, 2, 3. And then you just have those 3's in front. Okay? Now, for U minus V cubed, what do you think that looks like? The uh, same, but opposite, but minus. Okay, so we're going to have U cubed, right? And at the end, we're going to have, this one's tricky. Well, it's not tricky, it's just a pattern. It goes u cubed minus 3u squared v plus 3u v squared minus v cubed. It goes positive, negative, positive, negative. It just goes back and forth, okay? But the pattern is still the same with the numbers. Positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? Because when the, the power is 2, you multiply by 2, because there's 2 of them. When the power is 3, I multiply by 3, because there's 3 of them. I just wasn't saying I was doing Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, my gosh. Okay. The other thing we're going to finish with today is just simple factoring. Okay, doing some factoring. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to talk about some other special factors, like the difference of squares, perfect square trinomials, some are difference of two cubes, those fun things, okay? So, let's start here. Factor 6x cubed minus 4x, what can I factor out of that? And? A 2. Let's do 2x. If I factor out a 2x, I'm left with what here? 3x squared. 3x squared, and I'm left with minus? 2. Two. Can I factor that any farther? Yeah. Further, I guess. Uh, no, that's that's my final solution there. Okay, negative four x squared plus twelve x minus sixteen. Time out. What do you notice here? Negative. Wait, okay. I what do you notice with those numbers? They're all multiples of four. I also notice that this is a perfect square, and this is also a perfect square. Okay, that might tell me something. So, I could factor out of there. What can you factor out of there? Four. How about if we factor out a negative four so that my leading coefficient is no longer negative? Does that make sense? 
Okay. So if I factor out a negative 4, I'm left with x squared minus 3x plus 4. Yeah? What multiplies to give me positive 4 and adds to give me negative 3? Negative 1 and 4. Negative 1 and 4. Beautiful. And that is as far as I can take that correctly. Okay, what about what about 3x to the fourth plus 9x cubed plus 6x squared? What can I factor out of there? Uh, 3x squared. 3x squared. What am I left with here? X squared plus what am I left with here? And a two. What multiplies give me two? Adds give me three. Two and one, good. X plus one. X plus two. I have it factored as far as I can take it. Okay, hey, look at what's happening over here. X minus two times two x plus x minus two times three. Okay. What can I do there? No, this one's kind of tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. There's nothing to foil. Well, you want to like distribute, is what you're saying. Mm, let's not. No, we don't even need to do that. This is much easier than you think. What? Can I just multiply the what? Yeah, that's what Maddie just asked. We don't even need to do that. We can do something before that. We can multiply. Uh, yeah, what do you mean by that? So, um, X and 10 minus 2. Okay, so if I take this, I can say X minus 2. Squared. I don't need a squared. Oh, dang it. There's a reason why. Because basically we're working with grouping here. Okay. Hey, and then, what do I have left then? 2x. 2x and, three. and a 3. Do you remember when we grouped things? Yeah. We like would take this section and the, the same things and make it into one because we grouped it. Oh, yeah. No. Okay, we're working this problem backwards is what we're doing. Um, now, from there, okay, do I need to do anything else or am I done? I'm done because it didn't say to foil it, it just said to factor it. Okay. So you combine the same things to make one, and then you take whatever's left and you add them together. Okay. Because of that addition sign. If it had been a subtraction sign, then I would subtract them. Okay. So that's what we're going to focus on tonight with our factory. Like I said, tomorrow. We will work with special types of factories, difference of squares, perfect of squares, sum, um, and differences of two cubes, which means your homework should be quick and easy tomorrow if you know those patterns. Okay?